Hi, I'm Miranda Wright. This is day three of our 120-day Upper Room Prayer Campaign. In these first days of prayer, we're laying down the foundations of effective prayer. We'll soon be moving into spiritual warfare and more directed prayer, but we have to lay the foundation first because if the foundation isn't strong, the house won't stand. Some of these things you may already know or be moving in, but if it doesn't apply to you specifically, then pray for it for the church in general and at large. Because many move according to zeal, but not according to knowledge, and therefore they see little effect. The disciples spent time with Jesus, the greatest teacher, preacher, evangelist, and miracle worker the world has ever known, but they never asked him, teach us how to preach, teach us how to teach, teach us how to do miracles or raise the dead. They asked him one thing, teach us how to pray because they knew that if they understood the fundamentals of prayer and how to connect with heaven everything else would flow out of it real preaching is birthed through prayer real teaching is taught by the holy spirit in that place of prayer real miracles come to validate the messenger that has sought god and gotten his heart in the place of prayer everything in the spiritual man comes out of prayer And if it wasn't birthed in prayer, it was birthed in the flesh, and it will have no divine effect. So in laying down the foundations of biblical prayer in these first few days, today's prayer mandate is going to be a prayer of thanksgiving and praise. 1 Timothy chapter 2, starting in verse 1, says, I exhort thee that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that we may lead quiet and peaceable lives in all godliness and honesty, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. In this passage, we're told that first of all, before anything, before singing, before preaching, before teaching, before anything else that we do in our spiritual or physical life, prayer comes first. And amongst those prayers, it is listed that we are to give thanks. Beginning your prayers with thanksgiving and praise puts God in his rightful place. It puts our mind in the right place and it puts the devil in his place. Satan's original job was worship leader in heaven, but he became jealous of God's worship and wanted to be worshiped himself. When we lift up praise to God, it jeers and infuriates the enemy. It brings confusion, according to scripture, to the enemy's camp because there's nothing the devil hates more than seeing God praised and not getting it himself. So it causes him to flee. We see this even in the Old Testament when David played his harp and the evil spirit that vexed Saul departed. The enemy runs away from the presence of true praise, praise that is directed to God. Even in the midst of trials and hardships and heartaches, even when it seems impossible, that lifting up of praise is a declaration of faith. Petitions in prayer identify the problem, but praise in prayer identifies the solution. We give God praise, we give him glory, we give him honor because he is worthy, because he is deserving, because he has created all things and nothing is too hard for him. We give him praise because he is good, he is worthy, and he is faithful. But we also give him praise because the enemy hates it. It sets him a-running, and when the enemy goes a-running, it leaves his camp in confusion. That's why the Bible says that praise brings confusion to the camp of the enemy, and confusion in the enemy's camp assures a quick and easy victory. It brings breakthrough. Ephesians 5:19 says speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord giving thanks always and for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ in all things always we give thanks that means in the good and in the bad because when things don't look good when things seem to be falling apart when things are hurtful and hard when you're in trial and tribulation to lift up a shout of praise is a declaration of faith that your God is in control that he is stronger that he is able and that he has a plan and he will get you through it no matter what it looks like in the present Paul and Silas is a great example of this they were beaten stripped naked and imprisoned But instead of pouting, they prayed. And when they praised, the very foundations were shaken and souls were brought to salvation. Praise brings victory. Praise brings breakthrough because praise brings faith. We are going to make a declaration of faith by lifting up a prayer of thanksgiving and praise. Thanksgiving is a declaration of faith and appreciation for what the Lord has already done. But praise is a declaration of faith and thanksgiving for the things that are yet to come. 
So we're going to make a declaration of faith today by lifting up a prayer of thanksgiving and praise for all that the Lord has done, is doing, and is yet to do. Because this is pleasing to the Lord. And it draws him in, making it so much easier to lay our petitions before him. Just like Esther, she didn't just run into the king and lay her petitions. She took time first to praise, to worship, to serve him, to show her respect and adoration and appreciation for who he was. And then she brought her petition and the Lord heard her prayer. The Bible says that God inhabits the praises of his people. So when a true praise goes up and we're not talking about entertainment or self-gratification or the things that we do to please the flesh, we're talking about a true heartfelt praise and thanksgiving and worship and gratitude directed directly to God himself. When it is love expressed because true worship is love expressed and when we express our love, our appreciation and our reverence for him. It draws him in and his literal countenance shines upon us. According to scripture, his face turns towards us. He inhabits the praises of his people. And if you want a situation to change, you want God to step into it. If you want God to step into the room, lift up a praise, fill the room with praise and the king of glory shall come in. Psalms 100 verse 1 says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. If you want to enter into the gates of heaven, if you want to truly press in with your prayers, then you need to begin with thanksgiving and praise. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Praise and thanksgiving are invaluable to the realm of spiritual warfare for the fact that it causes the enemy to flee. It brings confusion. The devil hates it. He runs from the presence of real worship, of real praise, of real thanksgiving. So when the devil attacks, don't react. Attack back with praise because everything he's doing is trying to get you into a place of doubt a place of fear a place of unbelief or a place of offense and praise in an instant turns that around the devil is not omnipotent he is not omnipresent he has limited resources he is not like god he is a created being and the one thing he hates is to waste his limited resources trying to get you to turn away from god and lose your faith and lose your salvation and lose your peace but instead you turn around and praise he hates it he hates that you're praising God he hates that he's not being praised and he hates that he's wasted his time and his resources if you want to have as much fun messing up the devil's day as he has messing up yours stop pouting and start praising when those attacks come against you set your mind in the right place and recognize the only people who never come face to face with the devil are those who are already at his side so rejoice when you fall into those trials and praise God for there is no greater endorsement under heaven Heaven than to be hated by hell. First Thessalonians 5 says, Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks. That means in the trial and in the tribulation, in the rejoicing and in the praising, in the valley and in the mountain, in all things give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And in 1 John 5, it says that if we will pray anything in accordance with God's will, then he hears us. But right here, we see that God's will for us is that we rejoice and do not cease from praying and in everything, in all situations and in all seasons to give thanks, because that is a true declaration of faith in who God is and what he is able to do. In Philippians, it tells us that we should not be anxious or worried for anything, but in everything through prayer and supplication and giving of thanks to let our requests be made known unto God. In other words, anytime we bring a request, we need to bring it with thanksgiving and praise and adoration and a declaration of faith that we know that he is able, he is faithful, and he will do what needs to be done. So God, we press in this morning 
and we give you praise we give you adoration we lift up your name above every other name you are the god that is higher than every other god oh lord we give you praise we give you glory we give you honor we reverence your presence we come before you god and we don't come before you pouting we come before you praising we come before you with a declaration of faith that you are the god that created all things is anything too hard for you you are the god that set galaxies in motion and yet you hold our hearts in your hands you are the god that created every cell in our body so we know that you are a healer you are a creator you have made us and you can remake us you can mold us you can remold us you can do what no man can do because you are god and we are not so we put our faith our hope our trust and our love in you we lift up a shout of thanksgiving this morning god we thank you for everything that you've done we thank you jesus that you came that you suffered that you were despised and rejected and that you endured the shame of the cross for the hope and the glory that was set before you and that hope was that we might be saved if it were for but one if it were for but me you would have done it because that was your hope your blessed hope was that we might be saved and be with you in eternity though now our blessed hope is that we might be with you in eternity because you are God you are love you are faithful you are able we lift up a thank you to you this morning for that God that you are good that you endure that you endured to the very end for us lord and we pray that you give us an endurance at through remembrance lord endurance through assurance that we will see you again one day that we will be in your presence lord not just here in this realm because we are in your presence in this realm every day but face to face for eternity standing before your throne god we thank you that you have done so much and gone so far out of the ordinary to make that possible and a available to us because we are not worthy of it God but we appreciate it we thank you for it we thank you God that you are able to reach our lost loved ones God we thank you that the word says that your arm is not short that you cannot reach we thank you God that you can save the souls of men God we pray for conviction and humility and a heart of gratitude Lord an attitude of gratitude in the people that your people would thank you in faith for who you are for what you've done and start praying praising you in faith for what you are doing God we praise you for victory we praise you for breakthrough we praise you that the powers and principalities are being served notice we praise you that the enemy is being dethroned God we praise you that you are doing a mighty work in this land we praise you for a great end time harvest of souls we praise you God for mercy and a chance to stay judgment one more time because you tarry Lord the word says you tarry because it is not your will that any should perish but that all should come to repentance your heart longs for mercy the word says you delight in mercy God and we thank you for that we praise you that you are love that you are compassion that you are mercy but God that you are also just and that we have to line up with your will God we're not here today asking you to take our side to help us out we're asking you God to help us to recognize what your side is so we can take your side Moses drew a line in the sand and he said choose God's side God we thank Thank you that you call us to take your side and God we repent of all the times that we've called you to take our side it's not about us it's all about you so we reverence you we praise you we thank you we love you we lift your name on high we praise you for the revival that you are birthing in the hearts and in the minds of people God we thank you that you're raising up a great and mighty end time army that you're blowing on them with the wind of your spirit and that they're coming alive and they're praying and praising and sending out a shout of praise and of faith that you are doing a work in the land God we thank you for revival we thank you for revelation we thank you Lord for mercy God we thank you for your amazing grace we thank you for the blood of Jesus we thank you for the infilling indwelling Holy Spirit we thank you Lord for your word and your voice and your mandate we thank you God for your wisdom God we submit ourselves to your wisdom and your knowledge we give you thanks and praise and we reverence you this morning God God we pray for a return to reverence Oh Lord, if the church would stop whining and start reverencing, stop pouting and start praising, stop babbling and start believing, stop gossiping and start spreading the gospel, because it is good news and it makes the heart rejoice to know that the God of all gave up his throne 
came to this earth humbled and alone, laid in a manger, demonstrating humility, born in a barn like a baby lamb. You didn't have to, but you did it for me. And for that, I reverence you. I praise you. And I thank you this morning in Jesus' name. These daily prayer podcasts are meant to release the daily prayer mandate so that we can all pray together in one mind and one accord, that our prayers have power through agreement as we pray together. But as the prayer podcast ends and I fade away, do not let your prayers cease. Continue to pray in accordance with the daily mandate. And for the rest of this day, lift up a shout of thanksgiving and a song of praise unto our King, for he is able and worthy to be praised. Praise him for what he has specifically done in your life. Praise him for the vision that he's given you for what he wants to do in the weeks, days, months, and years to come. We thank him. We worship him. We praise him because we believe him. So throughout the rest of this day, let your lips manifest that faith 